has a has a uh, really robust program to fence those reserves, particularly in well settled areas. So that, for example, Nairobi National Park is now being it's mostly fenced off, and the problem of uh, eliminating the migratory component of the ecosystem has already reared its head with Nairobi National. However, you've got this megalopolis with four million people in it, and you can't really have lions and uh, giraffes running through the streets, and so they, they, they have to manage this problem somehow. Kenya is also fenced in the Aberdares, which is surrounded by some fertile farmland in the center part of the country, uh, Lake Nakuru National Park, which is uh, immediately adjacent to the second third largest city in Kenya, Nakuru, is completely fenced off. So that uh, fencing is something that uh, governments and wildlife agencies have reluctantly had to embrace as a, as a solution to the immediate problem, although it poses longer term ones in how we go about managing those parts. Yes? It sounds like we have tremendous areas that need to have migratory or can migration continue to prolong these ecosystems. Has anybody given any thought to fencing off the dense human populations and letting people know that hey, if you go from point A to point B outside, you're at risk. And letting the game have free run. Well, I, I, one of the one of the biggest problems Africa has is that sometime in the next year or two, it will surpass one billion people, and it had fewer than 500 million people only 15 years ago. And so it, it has a crushing population growth rate that is unsustainable in the long term. And it's, it's excuse the expression, the elephant in the room of most uh, conservation uh, discussions because there's, there's simply not enough land to go around. And uh, of course, people vote and animals don't. <laughs> so, so parks get fenced in rather than cities. Uh, 